Welcome to Hope Today. You know, the scriptures promise that we have a future in hope and we are believing for that hope and that future for you today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman. Yes, it's always, always a joy for you to join us wherever you are. If you're in Pittsburgh, Ohio, Florida, wherever you are, we always love the opportunity to come into your home and bring you a little bit of inspiration and encouragement so it can perk up your day. That's for sure. And Amy Schaefer will be along in just a moment. We want to start off with a scripture. This one is from Galatians ch chapter four, verse five. God sent him, Jesus, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. You know, Sydney, one thing I love about that, we know we're born into the family of God, but we're also adopted in the family of God. They're like, we're, we're entering we're enter in twice. We're, we're born again. It's a spiritual thing that happens that changes us completely, but we're also adopted. He's choosing us to, to come into his family. I love that. There is no other God like our God that you know, not only does he save us, you know, frees us and redeems us from the things that we do wrong in our lives, but he also, Tom, you know what I love is that we can be a son and a daughter of God and that's where our identity is. And so when I even gained that revelation a couple years ago, I guess I was in my mid twenties and I remember I was just going through like a spiritual awakening inside myself and knowing that I am a daughter of the most high. It completely changed and revolutionized the way that I just saw my life and this outlook on things. I think so. You know, I, I, I know, you know, my family, I know that I'm in a family. I was born in a family. I've never been adopted, but I know that, that people who are adopted, there's that, you know, Sydney, that, that feeling of, well, I finally have this place, this family, but yet you're always wondering about your natural parents as yeah. well. Well, we have both sides of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And even if you're just saying that, I just want to encourage, you know, some of you I know that might have issues with, you know, your your father or your mother. And I, there's a scripture that says, even though my mother, my father forsake me, the Lord is always with me. And know that Amen. the Lord God, the heavenly father, you can call him Abba. You can cry out Abba God and he is right there for you. And if that's you today, just give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Well, we always like to talk about what's going on and happening in our nation and world. And I just want to bring to light a story, a situation that's happening. Actually with Kanye West, I don't know if you heard about this, but Kim Kardashian West opened up about Kanye West's mental health. You know, she expressed her concern after West made some concerning tweets following his erratic behavior at his first presidential rally in South Carolina. Now on her Instagram, Kim Kardashian shared this quote, as many of you know, Kanye has bipolar disorder. Anyone has this or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. He is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressure of being an artist and a black man who experienced the painful loss of his mother has had to deal with pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder. Now, Kar Kardashian went on to asking for the media and the public to give her family grace, compassion and empathy. And Kanye right now is currently at a ranch, his ranch in Wyoming, and some of his closest friends, including comedian Dave Chappelle, went there to check on him to see how he's doing. And you know, Tom, I think right now when we see these things are happening, I saw the things unfolding, I saw things on TikTok and people were just sharing about this, but we were talking about this early, it's so important to know that this is a person, you right. know, regardless of yeah. his status, regardless of his popularity, like we really need to like lift him up in prayer because that's a hard thing to go through something so publicly well, like this. He made such a public declaration of faith that, that, you know, there's a spiritual component to this. There's a spiritual attack component that could be part of this. And, you know, and, uh, along with all the pressures of just being in the public eye and we expect him to be Billy Graham instantly, you know, it's like, you know, but, you know, we need to pray for him, lift him up, uh, you know, and uh, as uh, Kim Kardashian said there, their family needs grace in this time. We need to give them that grace. Yeah, I think we all need to just be reminded of like, where I think sometimes, especially in our culture, you know, we're very into fame and celebrity and different right. things is that we forget that these are people, that these are humans. So I even feel it in my spirit, in my heart, you know, just today, just pray for them, you know, pray for Kanye, pray for Kim. I know it might feel a little strange and weird, but we really do need to lift them up because there are a lot of people that are suffering with mental health issues and you know we shouldn't ostracize them or put them in a different box but we need to love on them. Amy we want to hear your thoughts. Okay so I I love Kanye and, and Kim really because I've been praying for them for a while now. You know, you can't put in an out an album, King Jesus and declaring that Jesus is Lord without a total transformation going on in your heart. And we know that all of hell is just angry and fiercely coming after him. So honestly, 
Let's hook up our faith and let's pray for Kanye. Let's pray for Kim. They have so much influence in our culture. Can you imagine when they are 100% sold out to God, the impact that they would make for the kingdom? I tell you what, let's keep praying, people. Okay, I love the theater. The stories portrayed on stages and screens, they're powerful and even life-changing. Our next guest, latest role, has made a huge impact on his life as he portrays Father Augustus Tolton from slave to priest. Take a look at this preview. Gus, how would you like to be a priest? Father, I could be a priest? If God wants something to happen, it will happen. But you gotta trust in him. I think we can build something beautiful, Father. Press forward and fear nothing. I'm, I'm scared. Hush, child, pray. I told you, you should have never come back. He is expected to minister only to the cult. There is too many white folk going there. Augustus, where are you? Come quick. You can get that new roof for the church out of my money now. Regrets. Regrets! Take your hands off of them. Get out of quench! I must tell you in confidence, I fear for my life. Get out! Ah! Bush us know where were we? Son, you can't give them what you don't have. They need the bread of life. And who else will give it to them? We want no Tolkens here. It's not the strong who prevail, but the weak who give everything to the Lord. May they all be one in your love. Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal away home, said I ain't got long to stay. Jim Coleman is the star of that one-man play, and he joins us now via Skype. Jim, welcome to Hope Today. Amy, thanks for having me. Thank you all for having me. Tell us about Father Tolton. Uh, I would describe Father Tolton as the epitome of faith, someone who escaped slavery with his mother as a child and became a priest, someone who was denied entry into Catholic school when he was young, was kicked out of Catholic school, was not accepted in any seminary in America. He was uh, literally the, the, the stone that the builders refused. He ended up having to go to Rome and uh, study to become a priest. And um, he came back and became the cornerstone uh, for Jesus. He is truly the definition of faith, uh, perseverance, and uh, he's up for canonization right now. Jim, he was born in 1854, and he experienced racism, he experienced hardships, and he went, like the title says, from a slave to a priest. How does his story impact us today and culture? It's very parallel to what's going on. We tend to feel that there's been so much change, but um, racism in itself is a wound in America, and it tends to scab over sometimes. And as it scabs over, we think that things have gotten so much better. But what happens is, is they, with, with police brutality, you pick at the scab. With, with uh, uh, unfair housing, you pick at the scab. With, with, with segregation, you pick at the scab. And then if you continue to pick at the scab, you open the wound back up. And with the death of George Floyd, the wound has been opened back up. Um, the pandemic has actually been something that has brought a lot of people together where people who normally would not have been watching Facebook or Instagram, uh, they are seeing what's going on. They saw a man lose his life. They saw a grown man beg for his mother and say, I can't breathe. They saw this. And to a lot of people, this was eye-opening. This was new. This was something they couldn't believe. But to most African-Americans, it was Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
know, this is so hard. You know, those images that we all saw with George Floyd and the things playing out in our country and how it affected, impacted the world. And Jim, I just want to ask you, you know, as an African-American actor, why is it so important for you, you know, to play these roles? Why is it so important for these stories to be told so people know what's happening and know about the history of our past? Well, because for myself, I didn't know about Father Tolton. I had no idea. There are so many stories of black uh, of uh, uh, heroes and that we don't know about. It's not in our curriculum. And in order for people to learn about it, we need stories like Father Tolton's. We need these shows that I'm in to go out on the road. We've been to with 37, 38 states and we we just, we're a grassroots organization. It's a one man show. I travel with a stage manager. We build a set, we do everything. But the stories have to be told because if we don't tell these stories, these stories are lost and we can't lose our history. It reminds me, you know, from slave to priest, Jim, that, you know, even in Christ, we went from being slaves to sin. Now, because of Christ made us priest unto God. So literally, how does his story impact us even as a believer, as a Christ follower? Well, I think really what we, when, when I look at it, I see it like this um, with Father Tolton. Uh, th th this pandemic, I'll, I'll go back to that, is a storm. And as the disciples were on the boat in the midst of a storm, they saw Jesus and Peter said, Father, if it's you, you know, call me out. And he walked out on the water with Jesus. And as he had his eye on Jesus, he was walking on the water. And then when he looked around at the storm, he sank. Jesus saved him. Mm -hmm. We are in the midst of a storm with everything that's going on around us. We are in the midst of a storm. And the only way to survive is to keep our eye on Jesus, to keep our eye on our faith. He has given us the, the rule book. He has given us the the, the play by play for best for best results. Follow directions, and that book is the Bible, and we have to follow those directions. And if we continue to follow those directions, we'll be just fine. That is so true. And I just want to ask you, Jim. You know, how has playing Father Tolton really impacted your life and your faith? What difference has it made? Have you seen personally? Well, for me, as an actor for almost thirty years, um, I've been in the industry. So I've, I've seen a lot of things. I've done a lot of things. I never, I was born and raised, well, I was raised by a Baptist minister. So uh, I made a point of <laughs> making sure that I wouldn't become a preacher. I loved acting. I'm not going to get into the church. I'm not going to do this. I was raised in the church. I was there most of my life. I'm going to do what God has given me the opportunity to do, and that is to be an actor. And my family said, you're going to be a preacher. And I said, no. And God has a way of making things happen. He knows how much I like acting. He decided that he was going to put me in a position to share his word as a priest. And it has changed my life. It has softened my heart. And it has let me know that, uh, as Jesus told the disciples, I give you a new commandment to love one another just as I love you. We are all one in Christ. And as I have traveled around, I've realized that we are all one in Christ. And in order to succeed, in order to move forward, you have to love just as he has loved us. He has given us a new commandment. And until we follow that commandment, we'll always be in chaos. And it has changed me to the fact that I am more loving. I'm more forgiving. I'm open to see. I treat people the way I want to be treated. I speak to people who I want to be spoken to. I love unconditionally, and I know that's what God and Jesus wants of me. Jim, I love how God is. You said, I will not be a pastor, but he will make <laughs> you an actor that portrays Father Tolton. I love how God is. Tell us how we can watch this play, this drama, and where we can find it. Well, right now, because of what's going on, we are not on tour. Uh, you can contact stlukeproductions.com, reach out, ask for the show. As I said, we are a grassroots organization. We take donations. We do whatever we can to continue to bring the show out. Once the pandemic is over, once we're able to travel, you can go to St. Luke Productions and request the show. 
and we come, we, we fly in, we do everything, we set up, we are self-contained, we will bring you a show of epic proportion. It is something that once you see it, you will never forget it. So please contact St. Luke Productions and we will bring the show to you. Yeah, we've encouraged everyone to go and watch the play. And before we, we have a minute left in our interview, we just want to ask you, Jim, what your thoughts are on with Kanye West and what's going on with mental health. If you're in the arts and entertainment industry, we just wanted to hear from your perspective. Well, what people don't understand about being in the entertainment industry, there are a lot of people with, um, with, with, with mental issues, and it's mostly depression. They appear to be happy. They appear to be on top of the world. But the bottom line is they've been put in a position where they are constantly watched. Their freedom is really taken. Everything they have is taken. And they have to pretend to be okay. We have to understand that we don't own them. We don't own them, but we feel because they are in the public eye, we own them. They are a part of our lives. We, we're not their friends. They're doing a job and we have to separate ourselves and allow them to separate themselves from the industry and just be people. Otherwise, it'll destroy them, and it has destroyed so many. You see, Robin Williams is gone. You know, you see these these great, great people who have committed suicide because the pressure is far too great. So I ask that you know you pray and pray and ask for uh, to give them strength, to give them wisdom, and to give them guidance. Yes, we are praying for all actors and even you, Jim, as you go on and portray Father Tolton. Thank you so much for coming. His life is inspiring us today and we're, be, we're better because he lived and, and changed the world. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this break. Imagine how your life would change if you reminded yourself of the power of the gospel every day. When you see how Jesus has loved you on the cross, you won't need to live for the approval of others. When you realize God includes you, you'll feel welcomed in instead of left out. When you realize the price Jesus paid to set you free, you'll run towards that freedom with passion. And when you see the most important victory has already been won, you'll be encouraged to persevere in your faith. Chosen, a 30-day devotional, is a book full of miraculous stories of salvation and powerful scriptural insights. Authors Brian Skog and Matt Brown have a contagious passion for the gospel that leaps off every page. Cornerstone Television is offering it during the month of July for your best gift. To give, call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org. things we are so thankful for here is we're so glad to have been able to partner with organizations and people like our next guest that serve our local community through Cornerstone Cares. George Spencer is the president and CEO of Greater Pittsburgh Mad Dads. George, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Well, for some of our viewers who may not be familiar, could you explain briefly what Mad Dads is? It's an interesting name, isn't it, Bob? We don't want our dads to be uh, mad, but <laughs> what, what is Mad well, Dads? Well, well, Mad in the context of, of uh, the acronym that it represents for our organization, which actually uh, is our full name is Men Against Destruction, Defending Against Drugs and Social Disorder. And uh, the genesis of that began during the uh, late 80s uh, when there was a, a, a national epidemic of crack cocaine dealing and drug emer gang immersions uh, occurring. And it was to get the strong, drug-free men in the community, began to walk the streets and go to the community hotspots uh, as surrogate dads uh, to try to impact that situation, bring about peace and uh, repentance and the different things that Christian faith stands for. 
And you know, George, like recently, the Mad Dads had an opportunity to go into a situation in Wilkinsburg with the protests and all the unrest that's happening. We've seen here in our city and across the nation. Can you tell us about it? Right. And, you know, and to tell you, to give you a little bit of a, uh, a insight on that, first of all, our national uh, president is in Minneapolis, where George Floyd was murdered. And that chapter there was on the streets during many hours. And we learned a lot from them about how you have rival groups get into these protests and the, the leaders might have a certain intent. And you get other people infiltrate and, and they begin to spark some things that weren't intended. Uh, in the case of Wilkinsburg, uh, actually, the protest leaders reached out to us and uh, asked if we would be uh, willing to come to a march they were having. They wanted it to uh, actually I didn't know it was going to be the form of a protest. Uh, their flyer said Wilkinsburg strong, taking back our community. And we had had eight murders in three weeks in Wilkinsburg. Mm -hmm. So I thought the focus was primarily that. That was a part of the focus, but it also uh, was a major part of what's been going on about bringing attention uh, to the police brutality issue in our nation. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found by us being present was a couple of things. One being uh, MADES works with law enforcement. Uh, a number of the protests or directed against practices. And what we found that particular day, uh, we were able to be somewhat of a mediator <laughs> between the two because there were times the police wanted to communicate something and uh, found that uh, it was difficult to do. So you know, we could take messages to both sides to make sure things were stayed in order between the two. George, is there Now, as the, yes. Is there anything happening now on the streets during this time of COVID and economic crisis that maybe is different from what you've had to deal with before? Well, I, 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 I tell you this about that. Um, one, I, I, I will add uh, back to the protests. Uh, I wasn't sure if you wanted to ask another question in, in between there. There was a rival group present and Mad Dash present was very critical uh, toward keeping the opposing uh, sides from getting heated to the point where that got out of control. And uh, I reached out to Tom Hollis and others uh, by text that, look, we got a live situation here. This is in real time. We need people praying here uh, because it was it was getting pretty heated between the two sides. And we were able to intervene, actually escort the several uh, individuals that were recognized as having caused problems at marches. The police even confirmed that. So that wasn't something the leaders were making up. And we were able to kind of just stay in the middle of that. And uh, the leaders could focus on leading the march. We stayed in our peacekeeping role. That was our uh, reason for being there. Now, another thing that took place with us during the pandemic, when the stay at home orders uh, came out from Governor Wolf, well, uh, for a few weeks, we stayed off the streets because the order was stay at home. But when we broke that order down, it also said volunteers could provide essential services to people. Mad Dads is a tough out when you get into that. If It's a matter of do we want to do something, not that we can't. So what we decided to do was to strengthen the arms of other ministries that had food uh, drives and things like that. A lot of times they were lacking men uh, with, the, with the muscle to unload trucks, okay, and, and take deliveries to people. Uh, and a lot of times uh, we found that they were led by senior citizens and or women, and they were just overjoyed with the presence of some men that would came to strength, lift their arms and support them in that effort. In addition to that, a lot of the people in the community didn't have masks. So we started buying masks, and thank you, your uh, support of us helped do that because masks were expensive at the time compared to now. Mm -hmm. We bought masks and we hit the streets, and people... I found we're very appreciative that somebody cared enough to come and bring them something they didn't have, but were ordered to wear. So those are some of the things that took place with me. George, I, I think this I really have been what we do. I just thank you so much for what you're doing through Mad Dads. Glad we can be a part of that. Uh, my phone, you can, you can text my phone anytime you want. I, my phone was going off. I'm like, what is this? And here, here it was this group of people you're asking for prayer for. I know that you are on the front lines, literally. And I love that kind of ministry. Love that you're there. So glad we can be a, a part of that. And glad to see that, that lives are being changed through your ministry. 
Thank you, and thank you so much for your support. Well, thank you. God bless you. Well, we want to take the, the, the remaining time. Again, I'm, I'm just so affected by what we've seen today, guys. Mm -hmm. the, the, the things that we've, you know, the, the, the things that we've talked about, about Kanye mm -hmm. and about uh, Jim Coleman and what he's involved in, and then what Mad Dad's is doing right there, mm -hmm. kind of right up in the face of, of, of everything that's going on. I'm, I'm just excited for that. And, and it's something we, we need to be praying into. And we ask you to pray for these people that are taking a stand for Christ because uh, that, the, the devil doesn't like it. We, got, we can't ignore that spiritual component of what's going on in the world. Yeah, you know, this is a time unlike any other. And I think it's just so important to know that we have to be praying. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is talks about like Jesus gave us the power to st stomp on scorpions and serpents and scorpions, and we will overcome all the power of the enemy. So I think even now more than ever, Amy, we have to bind together in unity. We have to mm -hmm. seek solutions from heaven yes. and really be the solutions, the hope ambassadors right now in this season. Well, I think, you know, Kanye, Jim and George today showed us that we can take what we have, the platform that we have, the area that God called us to our gifts, our talents, our skills, and we can make a difference. We can preach the gospel. We can act if we're actors. We can sing if we sing. But the point is, is that people need to hear the good news, Tom, that Jesus loves them. Jesus died for them. He has a plan for them. You know, it, it never gets away from that. And yet that affects every other part of our life, every sphere of our life. Now we want to we want to take time to pray right now. Amy, would you just lift up the prayer requests that have come in and, yes. and just just give these to the Lord today. Yes, Father, we just thank you so much for our friends, our families, our partners that have called in. And Father, what hurts them hurts you. What bothers them bothers you. What weighs on them weighs on you. Father, you're as close as the mention of your name. Father, I thank you that you will be the ever present help in time of need. Father, I thank you. You go into their homes, their families, their lives. You heal, redeem, restore, and you bring back to wholeness and completion in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Remember, you can call the prayer line at any time, uh, any 24 seven, you can call the prayer line and get someone that'll pray with you. Sydney, Amy, thank you so much. Good program, yeah, <laughs> great yeah, program. So and you know, think about that. You are an ambassador of Christ, Amen. like George, like Conway, uh, Kanye, like Jim. You are that ambassador and you can speak for God in the situation you find yourself. And you know what? God's got hope in your situation too. And we're believing that you'll find God's hope today.